right? So as I said, I would like to talk, to give you an idea about how, how a, a little lecture looks like in the profile uh, international management, and I would like to talk about branding, yeah? And before going into that, just very quick, uh, what you normally do as a, as a teacher in the first uh, session of your, of your lecture, you introduce yourself, right? And I'm a representative of, of, of our faculty, so I told you that I am, um, uh, uh, I'm one of 24 faculty members, right? And what we all have in common that we have been working at different places. Like for me, I have been working at different places here in, in Germany, like in Kiel and Passau and in Cologne. And if you know Germany, then you already know these are already different places. If you compare Kiel to Passau, which is in deep Bavaria, this is already sometimes feeling like being in a foreign country if you go from Northern Germany to Bavaria. Um, but then what is also very typical is that we, we work abroad, right? So international management doesn't go, if you haven't done research at any point in time, somewhere in another country. And so I've been, for example, at the Stanford at UCLA in the US in order to increase my research experience. I came back and not came back to Germany. I worked then uh, at the, my first private institution, uh, Flag Business School, the number one business school in, in Belgium, before then I came to KLU. And this is, I think, a very typical CV of our, of our research uh, faculty that we have. And the second thing is, I already mentioned that, so this little lecture is really touching consumer behavior, but also, let's say, accounting or international uh, finance. And uh, this is an, an interface, right? So this is affecting both, both areas. And this is what we also very often like to do, right? So I'm, I'm not per se a logistics person, but of course now working at KU, I, I work with colleagues on, on logistics topics, uh, management accounting and logistics I combine, and here I combine uh, management accounting, financial accounting, and, and marketing, yeah, and, and with, with the brand topic. Yeah, and um, now let's go a little bit deeper into this, what is, how a typical lecture may also start. I mean, uh, a brand is, a, is an intangible asset, right? So I, I have to define this somehow. Maybe if it's a building or a truck, I don't need a definition, but if it's a brand, we probably first have to talk about what, what the brand really is. And there are thousands of definitions, but let's keep it simple. For now and we say it's somehow a distinctive picture you have about the product that is somehow anchored in in your head yeah in the head of customers right for example you think about a certain brand a certain product and then you have certain associations like you say oh this is a it's a friendly brand or it's a, it's a brand i like or i love or i'm i'm addicted to that brand or it's an innovative brand and things like that and this is then what we would call a brand you have certain associations you have a certain brand image about the product in your mind when you think about certain products or, or services. Yeah, and this has uh, probably some, some value. And now I would like you uh, again to use Menti. And I would like to ask you the question, what do you think are the, the most valuable global brands? You can enter three, three names. So what comes to your mind when you think about a brand which is very strong, which is globally uh, available? What do you think? Let's, let's take a look at that. Very nice. So what you see is already, it's brands seem to be a, play a role everywhere, right? We have here something like McDonald's, so food, restaurant services. We have, of course, IT, where we have uh, our e-commerce with Amazon or, or Apple. Uh, we have logistics, of course, with uh, Kühn and Nagel. We have uh, car manufacturers like uh, BMW. We have sports apparel like, like Nike. Yeah, we even have UNICEF. I also like this. If you think about a nonprofit organization, of course, they also they have some kind of logo in your mind, uh, certain ideas about uh, a certain nonprofit organization. Of course, this is also a brand, uh, or you have a certain association when you think about companies like like Uni, uh, uh, UNICEF. Yeah, Louis Vuitton was also mentioned. Uh, yes, of course, right? If you think about luxury products like Ferrari and so on, then we also have these. This year. Yeah? So let's, let's see if there's further development. Tesla, yeah, a strong brand, yeah? taking over the old traditional brands. So very nice, very good. Yeah? Uh, now the question is, why this further develops? Um, how, why are these, these brands so powerful? What, why do we think as customers that these are very strong, very valuable uh, brands? So let's take, a, let's take a look at that and let's try a little bit to, under, to understand this. Yeah? So first of all, a little bit to, to support what you have just answered. So this is the currently, at least this is what the research says, the most valuable global brand. It's Apple. Right? You have, uh, so many of you have mentioned Apple on the, on the Menti. 
And now let's, let's use, use the chat function, right? So let's, make, let's try to make it as interactive as possible. Normally I ask this in the classroom, but now let's try to use the chat function. Um, and you would, would like to make sure to write to all panelists in the chat function. So I ask you simply, what do you think? What's the value of the Apple brand? Yeah, is it five euros? Is it 500 euros? Is it 5 million euros? What would you think that there's this company out there like Apple, which is able to, to print this logo on, uh, on the products and that you somehow try to, and that you are somehow inclined to buy this product. Anything goes. Yeah? So just, you have nothing to lose. Yeah? So enter any number and then we will see. So we have here the first guess, which is uh, 10 million. Yeah? I can confirm it's more. Any other guesses? Okay, there I have to count the zeros. That's not so easy. 400, 400 billion. Oh, very good. From last, 500. Oh, it gets even higher. Okay, very good, right? So <laughs> if you think about this, okay, one, 300 billion, 1 trillion. Very good, right? So I, would not, I want, didn't want to fish now for the exactly right number because this is uh, now here the, um, the right number. Huh? Uh, so we have 230, around about 230 uh, billion dollars. Yeah? So um, a lot. Yeah? So uh, we may ask in the end how we come to these numbers, but just to give you a feeling that it's a lot. It's these brands, just the brand, it's, it's very valuable. So it's probably worth to take a look at that. And another thing that confirms also what you have just, what you just did. So you have mentioned McDonald's, you have mentioned Google, Amazon, uh, Apple, of course, I have also seen Samsung. And there you see indeed that uh, these are the most valuable brands nowadays, right? So starting here with some uh, uh, IT related issues and then let's say some more traditional uh, uh, companies like Coca-Cola. And there you see always the numbers of this 234. Now these are estimates of course, but just to give you a feeling, it is something which is very valuable. Now the question is how do we come to this, to this value? Yeah? And usually if you go into the research on branding, you have two perspectives because companies can only build these brands or leverage on these brands if there's a certain value of a brand for a customer. Yeah? So that's why there are two perspectives. So there is first the customer perspective, like customer is king. Yeah? And then you have the business perspective. So the business person who then somehow leverages that the brand brings some value to you and me as a, as a customer. And for the customer, there are usually three things that are of value if you think about branding. Yeah? And the first one, is about what we call information efficiency. You may want to look at this picture here. It's a picture by uh, David Gursky. Uh, it's called 99 cents. It's a, a supermarket. Uh, and it's mainly about uh, sweets and candy bars and so on. And what's your impression? And if you maybe uh, have your own experience, if you go to a supermarket and you look, I don't know, for yogurt or milk or for some sweets, you are overwhelmed. Yeah, so, and, and the human being on average can somehow handle seven, eight pieces of information at the same point in time. Probably here, this is much more, yeah? Much more information. So what you do is, and what the human being is doing, you look for anchors. So we are back to the definition of the brand. What is anchored in your mind? You look for a logo or, or a color or whatever that's familiar to you. You look for the Snickers and Mars and Twix because they are somehow familiar to you. So in other words, uh, brands provide you with some information efficiency. They guide you to these, through this jungle of products. Yeah, and to see how that works, let's also play a little quiz, right? So um, maybe again, you want to use the, the chat function for that, just to see how, how st strong these very valuable brands are. So I, I will just show you a piece of a logo, yeah? not even the complete logo, just a piece of the logo, and then you enter, uh, or you may want to guess what is the company, what is the brand name behind it. Okay, understood? So let's start with the first one. Sorry, we're wrong direction. Now, here we go. This is the first one. Jonah, very good. Yeah, Alina, I see. I look in the chat function. Very good. So huh? now you have to be, you have to be quick, right? So it's, it's indeed, it is uh, Adidas. Yeah. Um, then the next one. Okay, we have here some very quick 
people, yeah, it's indeed, this is right, this is a mini, right? We are in the automotive sector, yeah? Very good, yeah? So, Jonathan, Ryan, very good, Nike, right? So, this is a big opponent to, to Adidas, right? So, as I said, sports apparel, right? These are the two big brands that we have globally where everybody just sees the logo and has certain associations about about the brand, like with Nike, yeah, just do it, uh, grown with Michael Jordan, etc. So, yeah, of course, these they have been very successful in building this brand. What about this one? Leon, MasterCard, first one, very good, right? So services, yeah? Completely different area. Leon, logo, Lego, exactly, right, toys, yeah? So toys, of course, right? You, for your children, you want to go for a certain product that you, that you know that you're aware of. So then we are at Lego. What about this one? Very good, right? Probably in the morning, right? Before you go to university, you want to have a good coffee and you have many options. So you go to Starbucks. Two left, this one. More difficult. Jakob, very good. Bayer, yeah? So um, uh, maybe you have a headache after a long night, uh, after university, you go for a party, next morning you need an aspirin, yeah? Many choices, you go for the branded product, which is uh, the aspirin by Bayer. And then, then finally, a brand which is uh, uh, maybe still has some potential to grow, which is already relatively strong. Let's take a look at this one. Jan was the first one, or was it Alina, right? Alina and Jan more or less at the same time. Indeed, so KLU, right? So also in the field of educational services, you probably want to look for something you are, have already some association, and that's probably why you also take part in the webinar to create this uh, association with a certain brand. So you see, information efficiency, this is something you, where you take value out of a brand. What's the, what's the second, what's the second uh, benefit for you as a, as a, as a customer, right? The second would be also as risk reduction. So you want to buy a product and you don't want to suffer from customer regret. You say, oh, I realize after I bought the product, it's a shitty product, yeah? And of course, this is maybe about a top quality because if, if you invest in a car, it can be 40, 50,000 uh, euros. Of course, you want to make sure you buy a good product there, right? So maybe it's then with Daimler or so, you say, I probably buy top quality. But it's it's much more this risk reduction. So this, it's it's about um, that you know what you get. It's not always per se top quality. So this is one company which started here in the in the United States in the 1940s and then was more or less growing all over the place, all over the world. And especially if you are hungry, you 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 want to know what you get. Maybe if you are in China and you want to go to grab something to eat and you are not aware of the Chinese food or don't know the Chinese food. Any guesses what company it is? Again, you may want to choose, uh, uh, want to go for the chat function. What company could there be? Leon, very good. McDonald's, indeed, yeah? So this is the idea of a global brand, right? So no matter what you, where are you see this M logo and you know what you get. Is this top quality? Probably not, right? But you know what you get if you enter a McDonald's restaurant. Right? And this is everywhere, be it in Russia, be it in India, be it in uh, Dubai, or be it, of course, in the United States. Now, uh, what is important in international management is, and that's what these brands are very good at, that they really consider different cultures and we really try to measure culture. Yeah, and this is a Hofstede model. You will get to know this into human resource management and also intercultural management. That for example, when it comes to risk perceptions, people are different in different countries, right? So like you see here some examples or take the, the, the big uh, differences here if it comes to Japan, very risk averse, so they, they, they don't like uncertainty while the Americans, they are much more brave, right? They, they like to go for risks, right? And these, these brands, what they do is they can really uh, customize their advertisement to these different kinds of, of uh, risk perceptions and risk cultures. Uh? And this is, uh, of course, one important ingredient of this class international management, of this profile international management, that we really try to understand differences between cultures and how this is affecting team building, branding, advertisement, uh, finance, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is a very important, important thing to consider. Uh, what is important is about this risk reduction. This is the last point for the second benefit for the customers: is these brands have developed this quality perception. I told you it's about what you what what's happening in your mind. Yeah, 
And you, you may know this very famous experiment. So also in, in, uh, in business administration, we do experiments. And what is very famous is, is this Coca-Cola Pepsi experiment. So what the researchers did, they, they said, okay, you close your eyes, you get two cans of uh, soda, and then you are asked, okay, so which one tastes better? Yeah, and in the blind test, what you see is it's more or less equal between Pepsi and uh, Coca-Cola. Now, what you do in an experiment is you change one thing, and then you do the same thing again. And what they, what the research did here, they said it's not not a blind test anymore; it's an open test. So now the people, the guys who are tasting, they see what they drink. Yeah, and uh, what they, what what would you say? What is the result? What would you say? What, what was now the answer by the? Uh, people in the experiment with regard to what tastes better. Coca-Cola, yeah, so Jan is saying that. Yeah, and it's really significant, right? So in the open test, you see before it was 50-50, and now a significant difference, so 65% of participants then say, yes, Coca-Cola, that really tastes better. Uh, and so you see it's about perceived quality, it's not objective quality, which is more or less the left, the left, uh, uh, a panel, but it's more the right panel where, because of associations, you think you think or you're somehow preferring a certain certain brand. So, final point: What is the value for uh, a customer when it comes to brands? We may we may deny this, uh, but it is about that, right? It's about social demonstrants or about a certain image. So, you buy certain products because you want to express something. For example, if you buy a Louis Vuitton bag or if you go for a Porsche, you express something. Maybe you care about top quality or you want to be innovative or dynamic and then you buy a Porsche. Huh? Or you maybe you want to demonstrate, I can afford it, right? Whatever it is, right? So uh, you somehow want to express something. That's a little bit what branding is about, that what, what advertising is trying to do all this. You, you don't want to translate or transfer in an advertising message how good a product is made of. It's about how good it makes me when I use it, right? And then we have extremes, right? So you have a certain personality, you think what you are, and then you buy certain products that you think are expressing yourself. So you think you are different, so I buy the product which has the label, think different. And then I even put a tattoo on my arm, yeah? They're even big fans of Microsoft, yeah? so which have a tattoo, right? where they say Microsoft, that's a great brand. And of course we have, for example, Maybe motor or bicycle, bicyclist fans are, who like to ride the, the motorcycle on the highways in the US, and then you also go for a tattoo, right? And then you have even groups, Harley Davidson owner groups, which are discussing the newest uh, outcomes of their recent trips with the Harley Davidson. And so this is about brand personality, or that you have a certain image about yourself, and you buy the product that fits to your image. Yeah, and now to the big question is this is the, the customer. Now, what can now? Uh, uh, managers or what can companies do or how can they make money out of it? in the end it's mainly four things how how then companies are making money out of it so the first one and i have always some some another brand logos which are related to this which is reflecting that so if you if there's a strong brand and you like the brand and you don't suffer from customer regret what do you do you stay loyal which is very good for companies because it's very expensive to acquire customers it's much uh, much cheaper to keep an existing customer right? and uh, Amazon is the company which has the highest loyalty rates because if you if you are with, uh, with Amazon you stay with Amazon of course there is this idea of price premium yeah you see here Evian it's it's water but this uh, six pack of Evian water costs six euros while the same uh, water can get you can get with one euro yeah same with Apple which is relatively expensive same with cars yeah? with a Louis Vuitton bag, you think I deserve it, we deserve it, this is top quality, so I pay, I pay more. Then we have brand extensions, right? If I have established a strong brand, then I leverage this, I can save money by, for example, going for other products and put my label on that product. So with Nivea, right? Nivea started with this little blue can, but now we have Nivea aftershave, Nivea shower gel, etc. And finally, you can earn lots of money by licensing. So I have created the Mickey Mouse with Walt Disney, and now I allow other companies to print the Mickey Mouse, I don't know, on socks, on a cup, whatever it is, and then I get money. So Walt Disney is earning 18 billion US dollars every year just by licensing. And this is how companies make money. Last point, and this is something that you can learn at KLU. Of course, the question is, how do you build such strong brands? 
in the end, we say in the research, there are three main ingredients. The first one is you have to know your customer. And especially nowadays with the big data available, yeah, you try to understand what the customer sees in your product. So for example, the customer does not just see a tablet. Yeah, he sees or he or she sees experience, networking, yeah, gaming or whatever. And then you make the advertisement, then you build the brand around it. What about uh, differentiation, right? You cannot build a strong brand if you're not different. You have to have this, what we call USP, the unique selling proposition. You have to be different in at least one dimension. Otherwise you cannot build a strong brand. And finally, you must be consistent. That means at every touch point, so what you see here on the slide are different customer touch points. So every, at every customer touch point, you must appear at the same way because you want to create this image in the brain of the customers. So if it's on the internet, if you meet with the customer, if it's personal sales, if there's maintenance, if there's customer service, you must be consistent. Otherwise you cannot build such a strong brand. Okay, so this is in a nutshell, right? So of course there is much more to say, but maybe as a takeaway for you, yeah, if you think if you think about the value of the brand, it starts with the customer. What is the value of the brand for the customer? And then finally, the companies can leverage this by earning relatively lots of money by uh, the idea that there are certain benefits for you as a customer if you go for certain brands. But of course, there is much more to say when it comes to how can we understand branding, how can we manage international brands. So. Of course, this is something that you can uh, greatly learn in this profile international management. Okay, so this is just as an idea, yeah? a quick overview, much more to say. So thank you very much for your attention.